When that person said to you about, you know, Hollywood will only kind of make you more of what you already are, mm -hmm. um, what did you think at that moment? This was how long ago, 10 years? No, 18, 18, 18 19 years ago. Wow. Um, I got a little scared at first because I didn't know, like, well, what, what is he seeing, you know, in me? Um, and I knew that I had certain, uh, you know, family issues when I grew up. Um, it's kind of what got me into art, I could say, sure. uh, mm -hmm. the creative role. Um, but I think also he, he was genuinely concerned because he saw a decent person who uh, had an idealistic view. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but at the same time, it's, I think when you're younger, it's just a position not of stupidity or foolishness, but maybe just ignorance because you don't have that experience yet to know when you're tempted with, you know, something that you, you if you had your parent there, it certainly <laughs> wouldn't be happening. Uh, you know, you wouldn't be contemplating, well, maybe I should, but in the moment you don't realize that in, when you're open and you're sensitive, um, some of that can come from trauma. And you don't realize that your reality as you see it in front of you is actually a reflection of that. So every choice that you make seems reasonable, but it may be coming from a place of fear. It may be coming from a place of reaction uh, where you had to do something. I mean, I, this is some of the stuff I've learned, but where people who are criminals, I'm just taking this as an extreme. Uh, we see high speed car chases all the time, right? We all know how that ends. Every time for the last 20 years, we've been seeing how the car chase ends when the cops are following you, you don't get away. But yet, time and time again, people continue to do that. Reason being, and what I've learned in my research and my own discovery, not that I'm a criminal, but, uh, but that a lot of what we do uh, that, is, that is irrational to the outside is in fact rational to us because it's a it's a positive behavior that warded off something else earlier in life and it's been imprinted in us that this is what gives us a positive outcome totally unconscious of it totally about a set of certain you know like choices you wake up every morning you have certain choices and this person over here has a different set of choices given their environment their background the way they think about things so um, when he said that to me, I, I didn't understand the depth of it, but coming full circle now, I would give that same advice to any young person who's coming out to LA, not as a caution about them, but to be mindful of yourself and watch how you respond, how you think, how you act according to what is presented in front of you. And that takes Unfortunately, sometimes it takes experience of some very difficult uh, decisions that you make at the time that seemed right, or maybe, you know, not, uh, not so bad, but then the, at, as it played out, you realized, wow, I, I really did uh, screw up there, or I, I made a bad choice, and I went against my gut instinct. I think that's the best. I will say this to anybody who's listening that this, your gut instinct is probably your best choice. The first thing that you think about in, in reaction without knowing any information is probably the most honest of anything uh, as opposed to trying to logically talk your way through it. You know, I've had situations where I wanted certain people to be a part of our projects and didn't realize that they didn't want to be a part of our project, they needed a paycheck. Uh, fine, you know, that's their right, but because I felt that I needed them, I limited my choices to that individual and attached myself to the, the idea that I had to make that work as opposed to opening up and looking at all the other possibilities that are out there. Now, that sounds very rational and logical, but at the time, it was personal, it was emotional, that I was attached to having, needing to have that person in order to validate what I was doing and win to get it. That's my own personal issue. 
But if I'm not exploring that and looking at the consequences of that thinking and that behavior and the outcomes that it gives me, then I only have one of two choices. I'm going to be completely stubborn and, and I'm going to be, I'm going to force it or all of that time, energy and effort that I'm using, I can use to look open and outward and look at other people who may be able to, to give me those things that I want, that I truly want to find and find the best match. And um, experience has taught me that that's a very good thing to do. <laughs> so. Well, it's not just also too, I think, falling prey to temptation. I know they yeah. say sometimes like recovery meetings are held in Vegas because <laughs> what better place to test your Trauma sobriety? <laughs> yes, to test your sobriety and every trigger you have would be Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, but but uh, flattery, yeah. and that's something that as a young person, you know, you walk down the street and you get someone stopping their car and saying, "You would be perfect for this," and especially too if you're coming with. A set of let's get really therapisty tools that aren't you know maybe the best that is gonna be like you're gonna hear angels mm -hmm. and so if you see that enough then you you would be prey to other things as well and so mm -hmm. I think flattery and it can happen later on it can happen and you don't realize that sometimes you'll never hear from that person again and that that is the thing that you kind of have to guard yourself up yeah that's that's an experience that I found like I've had people sit down with me full tilt with meetings having watched our previous films, having read the script and offering a ton of things. And I like, this sounds great. And then nothing. And I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna introduce you to this person, that person. You know, I, I, I don't know what that person's motivations were um, or, or not, um, but to spend my time getting upset about it or, or obsessing over it or trying to figure out that person's problem and then look at, you know, I guess it only hurts me in the end, um, but I've, I've encountered that before where, you know, you can be very, you know, early on in my career out here as an actor, in fact. Um, <laughs> yep, they it, exist. <laughs> it, it is, it's, uh, you, know, you know, going out on a, on a business meeting and having things not, you know, I and mean, we're talking about an era of me too, it, it happens to guys too, oh, and sure. it's never been talked about, but there are, you know, there are people in Hollywood who, um, you know, they have a right to do what they want, but when they cross the line of kind of putting you in a position where, you know, you're not, um, you're not able to conduct, you know, yourself as a person and have to kind of adjust according to them, it's now you're kind of, you're, you're selling yourself into something that is really not about you anymore. It's about what you do for that person. And, um, and it is easy, you, you know, compliments are very easy to give, but at the same time you have to have your own center, your own self-worth, so that you know that if you're, if you're dealing in business and you want, you know, you are talented and you believe your talent or you have something to offer, find somebody who's looking for that in you. Like, you know, the, the look and everything, I mean, I, I do cast all of our films and I have seen random people that I've gone up to and I say, you know, you have a really great presence just, just, and I, and I said, you know, I'd really like to see what you look like on camera. And I mean that in, truthfully, because I love discoveries of talent. This sure. is how we've been able to make all of our movies with these talented people who are not union, most of them are not. And, uh, and not because I'm against the union, but it just has to do with cost and everything else that we're trying to do and we pay everybody. But, but it has more to do with, you know, like being authentic and being genuine and, and being professional. And I think you can be all of those things and still get the desired result that you want without having to do all this other kind of stuff, which is more of like, I'm going to make you feel good so I can get something from you, which is all I have to offer you is the truth according to what I see. And that could be totally wrong. And you tell me, hey, go screw yourself, you know, like get lost. But that's your right. All I'm doing is making it an attempt to try to say, hey, I see something here. I think there's something really good here, and I'd like to I'd like to see if it, it's going to work for what I want to do.